Welcome back. It's day four of the Success Path Planning Workshop 2022. I can't believe we're at day four already. By now, you've hopefully got yourself one big, audacious, overarching goal that clearly marks your direction of travel for the year or several years ahead. Even if you don't know all the pieces of the puzzle and how you're going to get to that goal, remember that's okay. That is actually what we want at this stage. We want to be at the point of having a direction of travel and maybe just a little bit of a oh, holy heck, am I really going for that kind of feelings? That is all good stuff. If you haven't yet done days one, two, and three and got to that point, please stop this video now and go back and watch those first three videos. Make sure you complete the planner entries up until that point. It's super important that you do that before going any further today. Assuming you've done all that, just do one final check-in on that goal. If you've had a night's sleep in between, ideally. Is it still big and audacious enough? Maybe just a touch scary. Does it still feel fully aligned with your underlying purpose and what drives you, that vision and theme? If it doesn't feel that way, take some time to revise that first. It's worth getting this bit right. That doesn't mean you can't update this goal in the future. In fact, you really should update as you get clarity from taking action. But for that clarity to be the kind of clarity that you want, you need to be taking action in the right direction. And that starts with that goal setting in the right direction. But let's now dig into today's task, assuming we've got all that down. Today, we're going to be figuring out what you need in order to start making progress on that big goal. So, so far, all we've actually managed to get to, all we've managed to get to is that big goal. Now we actually get to talk about how to make it happen. The hard bit is done. This is now just process, okay? So stick with me. On page six, you are going to start today's task by breaking down your big goal into sub goals. This could be a simple matter of thinking, what's halfway to my big goal? Maybe your goal is financial and about retiring to somewhere nice on a nice pot of money. What would be a sensible partway goal to break that down into? And then you can break that down further. If instead you've got a goal like mine that's about making a change and you don't want all those steps that you need along the way, what are the next one or two sub goals or milestones that move you in that direction? You want these to be moderately big as it's going to be stuff you work on throughout this year. So for example, my milestones this year are around consolidation of various aspects of the work I'm currently doing, putting in place more SOPs, building out my team. But yours might be to land a new job or a promotion for a specific skill set so that you know you're building the skills for that ultimate role that you want. Spend some time thinking through what these goals and milestones might be so that you can ensure you are on the correct path. You don't have to fill out the page, but use as much or as little as feels good to you. Sometimes it's actually worth making this short and sweet to show real clarity, but other times it's nice to spend some time brainstorming through all the options, and that's why you have so much space here if you need it. Once you've done that, just spend a few moments reflecting back on your why and vision and making sure that it's all fully aligned. If it isn't, tweak it. This can be an iterative process, so be patient with yourself. You're putting in place a plan for a whole year here. So it's important that we get this right and it's all fully aligned with everything else you've done in days one, two, and three. Next on page seven, you're going to identify resources. This is super important as I want you to be upfront with yourself as to what you need to ensure success. Take some time to remind yourself of that big goal and then ask yourself, what do I need to make that big goal happen? And by what we mean things that you might need to put in place. For example, do you need to get a certification, go on a course, hire a coach, bring in support in some way, have fewer responsibilities in some aspect of your life so you need to you know, share more of the workload at home? What needs to be put in place to make this happen? And yes, it can include hiring somebody to clean your house. In the next box, you are going to get more specific based on the sub goals and milestones you just identified on the previous page. So maybe the big goal requires you to do an MBA or to have a housekeeper, but you aren't there yet. What sub goals support those things? And what resources do those sub goals need? Maybe such as freeing up your time for study on some particular set of experience that you don't have yet, getting a promotion so that you've got the pay packet in order to hire the housekeeper. Finally, at the bottom of this page, I ask one of the most important questions you need to ask yourself all the time. What is the one thing I need to do first? This is a great way to cut out the noise. I love to think on the phrase, what will make everything else easier or unnecessary? If you can find that one thing that you found your focus point, do not skip this step. You can only focus on one thing at a time after all. 
In fact, I came across a fascinating analogy recently for having too many focus points or projects on the go. Think about having a car. You can have as many cars as you want, or at least as many as you can afford, but you can only drive one at a time. If you try to drive them all, you can't actually do that physically. So actually what you do is you spend your time hopping between cars, driving five yards, hop to it, hop out, run back, drive another five yards in another car, right? You spend all your effort doing the in-between stuff. It gets worse. What if you want to drive your one car north and one car south? That's impossible to do at the same time. That's equivalent to having two projects that have completely different drivers. Hence why we did that exercise of making sure you had one big overarching goal to set a direction. So at least all your cars are focused in the same direction. Take this analogy whenever you are tempted to hold and push forward two or more things at once. You'll be spending all your time hopping between, reminding yourself where you were, refreshing, and ultimately not achieving as much. So always figure out what is the one thing I need to tackle first that unlocks everything else. Take your time to answer that question because it does make everything else easier. The final task today is on page eight of the planner and it's a bit different, but super important to complete before we move into the quarterly planning in tomorrow's session. That is your scorecard. There are a list of questions that I've put together where I want you to rate yourself out of 10, one being a very low score and 10 being very high, very optimistic. You're checking with this every quarter and my hope for you is that over this year, everything moves into the green section of the scorecard. Each of these areas are areas that I now know after years of coaching and teaching are really important to feel grounded and lead to that high performance that I know you may well be craving. If you don't have these fundamentals in place, it's hard to be that high performer, which is why the scorecard is here. You'll be using this tomorrow to help you identify exactly what your focus is are for each quarter and each month, so take a few minutes today to fill it out. That's it for today. Tomorrow we will finally be getting to the actual planning for this quarter and I am so damn excited for you. Get in there, map it out, figure out what's coming next for you. I'll see you in tomorrow's training.